Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. And it is... That's a lovely, that's a lovely way to get back to work. Yeah, that's a good way to get it's back It's a lovely home. sound to hear again. It's great to be back. We've been off the air for a week. And while we were gone, there was major news about the most powerful man in the world, Superman. <laughs> this weekend? This weekend, DC Comics announced that Superman is changing his motto to truth, justice, and a better tomorrow. This, of course, this, of course, a big change from his original motto, wearing underwear on the outside since 1938. <laughs> and he's proud. <laughs> big boy. <laughs> and I'm being told we made that up. His previous, <laughs> his previous motto was actually truth, justice, and the American way. But, you know, it makes sense to change it. If Superman really followed the current American way, he would fly to school board meetings to scream about how the vaccine gave him heat vision. <laughs> now, now, <laughs> changing the slogan for this cartoon has made a lot of people angry, which, of course, is the American way. <laughs> but for the record, the American way slogan was not his original motto. That was added later on the Superman radio show that made its debut during World War II. But a lot has changed since the 1940s. Back then, Superman was also doing ads for cigarettes. Be like Superman, smoke Chestertons, and you'll never die. <laughs> now, DC Comics explained the slogan change in a statement, saying it's intended to honor Superman's incredible legacy of over 80 years of building a better world, adding the new catchphrase is meant to fully embody that hope for everyone. Or as Fox News put it, new communist Superman cancels Mr. Potato Head's Christmas penis. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> That's how it goes on, huh? Yeah. Of course, I'm kidding, but not by much. This is maybe to make Superman more palatable to the Communist Party of China? I don't know why you would change the motto of Superman, truth, justice, and the American way, Nancy. What way should we have? The Communist China way? Should we have the <laughs> Taliban way? I'm going to call him Superman, and I'm going to say the American way, and Merry Christmas. And they're going to say, OK, Aunt Nancy, what do you say you put down the bottle of Jack Daniels and give me that steak knife? <laughs> OK? <laughs> give me, put it. Put it, give me the... It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be... I've got my own bone to pick with Superman's new motto, a better tomorrow. That sounds suspiciously like the motto of my old Colbert Super Pack, making a better tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> okay, this is bad. This is bad, DC Comics. Now that this is out there, people might come to the mistaken conclusion that I, Stephen Colbert, I'm secretly Superman. Oh, oh. Yes. Yes. yes! No! No! Uh -huh. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> take on the grass. That, that would be. <laughs> totally wrong. Speaking of the Man of Steel, this weekend we got a surprise media appearance from former British spy and man whose hair is business in the front, werewolf on the neck, <laughs> Christopher Steele. Steele's the author of the famous Steele dossier about former president Jack Assolantern. <laughs> Prior, <laughs> sure, why not? Why not? <laughs> that's a good one. And that's a good one. And extra points for being seasonal. Yeah, that's right. Prior to the 2016 election, this dossier alleged, among other things, that the Russians had a videotape of the former president having prostitutes pee on a hotel bed where President Barack Obama once slept in Moscow. Even worse, he later filled Obama's Oval Office desk chair with a neo-fascist grifter constantly leaking burger farts. <laughs> now, now, the so-called... PP tape was never released, no matter 
how many times I prayed. But <laughs> in an interview with ABC News, Steele says the former president's P tape probably exists. No. No, Chris Steele, you will not get my hopes up again. <laughs> I have moved on. My heart cannot take this. This show had an official last PP tape joke on January 25th. You cannot get me to talk about this until the actual tape has been released. Or at least streamed. <laughs> I'm warning you, no. I'm serious, I'm, but I'm serious about this. I am warning you, Steele. If this turns out to be a false report again, you're in trouble. <laughs> of course, Steele isn't the first British spy to uncover international urination. Who, who can forget thrillers like Tinkle Taylor Soldier Spy, <laughs> The Man with a Golden Mattress, and Doctor, no thank you, I don't need a bathroom, I'll just pee on the bed. Steele isn't the only one still talking about that tape. At a donor retreat last week, and this is true, the former president said, out of nowhere, I'm not into golden showers. <laughs> um, no one asked you? <laughs> and when no one is bringing up the thing that you famously deny, you shouldn't bring it up either. You don't hear Paul McCartney beginning his concert by saying, hello, New York. I did not secretly die in 1966 and get replaced by a lookalike from Canada, eh? Damn it! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> left handed, left handed. Yeah, I'm, left -handed. The Hoffner. Right. I'm playing the Hoffner up here. I'm playing the Hoffner up here. <laughs> then the former president cited Melania saying, You know the great thing, our great first lady? That one, she said. I don't believe that one. <laughs> Yes, she doesn't believe that one. Having prostitutes pee on a bed that does not sound like my husband. <laughs> now, getting spanked with a Forbes magazine with him on the cover and then raw dogging that porn star at a celebrity golf tournament two weeks after I gave birth to our child, that's the man I married. <laughs> Speaking of the former president, the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th Capitol riot is cracking down on his aides, especially disgraced strategist and waterlogged Nick Nolte. <laughs> Steve Bannon. The committee subpoenaed Bannon to testify about White House planning prior to the riot, but Bannon refused, claiming executive privilege, even though Bannon wasn't serving in government at the time of the attack. That's like saying, you can't arrest me for making crystal meth in my bathtub. I filled it with Perrier. It's international waters. <laughs> no one, but nobody. <laughs> sure. No public. <laughs> no one's buying the executive privilege argument. And on Thursday, the committee announced it was referring Steve Bannon for criminal contempt of Congress. Yes! Steve Bannon, Steve Bannon might be going to jail instead of just looking like he's been there for 30 years. <laughs> and I'll talk about all of that. I'm going to talk about all of that and more with my guest tonight, January 6th committee member, Representative Adam Schiff, right over there. <laughs> what? That's an exclusive? Is that what saying? That's an exclusive? Over in the COVID world, cases are on the decline. A lot of that is because people are getting their shots and more, like everybody in this room. Everybody in this room got the shot. And more shots are on the way because last week an FDA panel recommended approving COVID vaccine boosters for Moderna and Johnson & Johnson. You're going to end up getting so many shots at CVS, your vaccine card will look like one of their receipts. <laughs> but, <laughs> CVS fans, one of... One of these vaccines is not like the others. For both Pfizer and Moderna, the recommendation is that after six months, people over the age of 65 or who have pre-existing conditions should get a booster. But for Johnson & Johnson, the panel recommends boosters for people 18 and older, and it can be given two months after the first shot. 
Cool. Hey, you know when that information would have come in handy? <laughs> Two months after the first shot. <laughs> this is... <laughs> this is because J&J is far less effective than the other two vaccines at preventing serious illness. But according to Dr. Fauci, there's no need to freak out. We know this vaccine was not as effective as others. So should those 15 million people who got the vaccine be concerned given these recommendations? No, not at all, Martha. I think that they should feel good about it because what the advisors to the FDA felt is that given the data that they saw, very likely this should have been a two-dose vaccine to begin with. Obviously. The name itself has two doses, Johnson and Johnson, just like, just like how we're getting Moderna. That's, that's science. That's not the only hot news Dr. Fauci dropped this weekend. He also saved Christmas. If you're vaccinated and your family members are vaccinated, those who are eligible, and that is obviously very young children are not yet eligible, that you can enjoy the holidays. Sorry, kids. Santa's only coming for fully vaccinated adults this Christmas. Ho, ho, ho! Oh! Ho, ho, ho! You've been good little grown-ups this year, so I brought you a linen duvet cover and large print Tom Clancy. We got a great show for you tonight. My guest...